Hi guys, James here, thank you for coming to watch and today is going to be a very simple video. It's really to answer a question about uh, an attenuator that I've got and I know it's a really, really popular one. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I've got two attenuators here. So I've got the Universal Audio Oxbox, which is a, a magic box of all sorts of tricks. You know, you can um, get cabinet simulations and, and IRs and, and all that sort of stuff and it's really great for that. Um, and it's also got an attenuator. Now you can use the attenuator between a cabinet and a head, or you can use it in a combo amp. If your amp, uh, if you've got like a, a speaker input on your amp, you can actually take the jack out. And that's what I can do with this Tone King Sky King down here. And the reason I can do this test uh, is the Tone King Sky King has its own attenuation, which is actually inbuilt um, on two channels, one for each, and that's the Iron Man uh, from Tone King. Now you can get an Iron Man attenuator separately, um, I've had the Iron Man 2 on order for a few weeks now, but it's still going to be a while. Um, so I might redo the test then with different amps, but I wanted to basically just go from the loudest downwards um, using the amps inbuilt attenuator and then the Oxbox and basically see what the difference is. Uh, now the way I'm going to do this is I've got one SM57 and two room mics. Um, set up so that you can sort of hear it in the room and I basically set it so that at top volume it's just under clipping the mic and I'm not going to change the level so from then on everything you hear will be as it's recorded in the mic so basically if it goes down to nothing it goes to nothing and that's why I've got the room mics hopefully we'll hear something now it's extremely loud this amplifier even though it's only 35 watts it's one of the loudest amps I've heard at that power rating um, louder than my uh, Fender Vibralux and uh, <laughs> It's just extremely loud. So I'm only going to play basically two chords on each setting. I don't think we need more than that anyway. We're just trying to get an effect of what happens with the attenuation. Uh, as we get to the lower ones, I'll talk about the dynamics and the playability because frankly, anyone who buys this Tone King Sky King thinking they're going to use it at home at full volume is nuts. You're not going to be able to. Now I've got it set to just under four on the volume. The treble and bass are nearly in the middle. I wanted to keep it relatively flat. I've only just got the reverb on the first notch up and the tremolo is turned off. That's for the rhythm. For the lead setting, um, well, I'm not actually sure I'm gonna do the lead setting, I think it might be too loud. We, we might test it. Let, let's start and on screen, uh, although I've, I'm gonna record all of the Sky King by itself first and then all of the Oxbox, I'm going to edit it so you see one after the other. Um, and hopefully that will, will make sense to you. So here we go. I've prepped my wife who's in the next room. I'm just hoping the neighbors aren't gonna kill me. Okay, so let's start with the least attenuation, zero attenuation. It's gonna be loud. I'm basically just gonna play two chords and a tiny bit of single note playing for each setting. Here we go.
So those are all the different levels of volume you can go through. Now obviously I haven't heard the audio back through the mics, but um, through six months of usage of the Sky King and about three months of the Oxbox, uh, here's my opinion. If you were going to buy just one attenuator, um, I would personally go for the Iron Man. It's, it's definitely got more flexibility, let's say. You're going to have a lot more notches on the actual Iron Man attenuator than even the one that's built into here. The Iron Man 2 has lots of different, um, you know, sort of steps in decibel reduction. The Oxbox, on the other hand, doesn't seem to play nicely with all of my amps. So, specifically as you go down the sort of power rating in the amps, um, the attenuation just becomes less and less sort of high fidelity. With my Sir Ombre, which is an 18 watt amp, uh, by the time I, I kick it down a couple of notches on the attenuator, the uh, tone is nothing like what it is on the on the amp when it's by itself. It's really flubby in the low end and it just sounds like it's got some electronic sort of weird noise going on. Um, with the Sky King, at every volume level, it basically sounds like it would when it's loud. Now, it's too difficult to play this, this volume at full, um, or this amp at full volume, or even with the first notch off. I generally either have it on the third or the fourth notch down. That's comfortable. You'll, you'll have seen <laughs> playing today through this really high output Les Paul that there was lots of squeals and noises and I'm just not used to playing at that volume in such close proximity and in this sort of room, it's reverberating everywhere. It's really uncomfortable. My, without having looked back at the footage yet, the Oxbox, everyone that I've seen review it says that on setting five, there is no attenuation. Well. Having used it on lots of different amps now, I feel it definitely step five does have some attenuation of some sort because it's definitely not as um, as loud as when the Sky King was by itself. So that's one thing. It's an always on attenuator as far as I can tell. And really it's just not that useful. Um, as I said, on the lower output amps, it just, it just doesn't seem to work very nicely. And on the more powerful ones, you're still either too loud or too quiet most of the time. So setting three seems to be the hot spot on a really loud amp where it's okay. But if I want to go down one level further, it suddenly just disappears. I mean, you couldn't use that live. And then on step four, it's still too loud. So it just doesn't have enough flexibility as far as I'm concerned. Um, and in that sense, it's very expensive for an attenuator. Now the, the Iron Man 2 is, is only a little bit cheaper, but from what I've seen and from what I have in my Tone King, it's just much, much better at actually attenuating and having so many different variable settings that you can choose from. So that's my thought really. If you need one box to do it all and you can only afford one box and you want to be able to use it for all sorts of reasons, then the Ox box is still probably the go-to. If you play a lot of live gigs, then definitely I would have the Iron Man too. And if you record a lot, and you can do a lot of gigs, then you might need to consider having both. But essentially, um, hopefully this has been useful for you to sort of see the difference. In today's video, uh, the Oxbox works reasonably well, is all I can say, especially when you've got a reasonable amount of power. But the feeling in the room is different. The Tone King's own attenuators, the Iron Man, just seem to hold up so much better to the detail and the tone. Whereas with the Oxbox, I find I'm losing a lot of the, the glorious tones you get out. I've been using it on this two rock here the last few days, this um, classic reverb signature. And it's just, 
Uh, when I take the Oxbox away from it and just use the master volume, the tone is so much nicer than when I use the Oxbox. So take from that what, it, what you will, but I'm not a fan of the Oxbox attenuation. Um, and I think it's it's not the main trick out of that box anyway, but yeah, I wouldn't trust it if I was playing live. So anyway, hopefully that's been useful. If, uh, if you've uh, found it useful, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and I'll see you next time. Cheers.